Hey everyone, it's Zorn from the Fantasy Grounds 2 forums and uh, after a recent question about making video or making battle maps with campaign cartographer slash dungeon designer, I uh, decided to go ahead and make a quick video on how to make a battle map. What I'm going to do is rebuild the battle map you see right here on the screen. So uh, I just want to dive right in. Um, depending on the length of the video, I may uh, fast forward through some of the building, but uh, I think we can get through this pretty quickly. So I've got campaign cartographer up. First thing I'm going to do is make a new map. Uh, dungeon. Uh, I'm going to use this annual John Roberts style pack. Uh, it's a free download uh, from the annuals. Uh, you go to uh, about annuals on the website. And uh, let's see, now I already know this map is going to be 85 feet by 115 feet. And I'm going to call this Tavern Brawl because that's the name of the encounter I'm making it for. Next, and I'm going to go ahead and have some grass in there already. We're going to do Grass Dry Dark. Finish. And it'll ask me where I want to save it. I tend to keep all my stuff in an RPG folder. And we'll call this E2A since I already have this map made. So I've got my map up right now. First thing I'm going to do is add a grid. Makes it a little easier to draw everything in. I don't want any labels on it. Set to five feet and hit apply. Now I got me a pretty little grid here. So first thing I like to do when I make a map is uh, put the walls down. So I'm just going to use the default wall. I want to make sure my snaps are set up right. I have a five foot grid and I want two snaps. So it'll snap at five feet and two and a half. Makes it a little easier to draw the map. So it's going to start here, although you you never want to start drawing a wall right at the edge. So let's see. There, one, two, one, two, two, four, oops, six, eight, and four, up, two, over to the top, and close that wall. And then I need to draw my stables in. <coughs> And I got one here, and I got one here. Now what I want to do is uh, I'm going to move some of these walls to the back so that they uh, overlap correctly, because I want these smallest walls to be at the bottom. So I've got that drawn in. Now we're going to add a little, uh, like the tavern keeps little house. So we'll start here and go looks like it's three by four squares and then there's a little side room tacked on for his bed and again I want to drop that one down and then let's add the tavern itself so default wall now I think the main wall starts here but we're gonna start in one square yeah so we'll go over one and then uh, I need to change my snaps because I want to come up two feet. So I'm going to go to a five foot snap. So each tick is two feet or is one foot. And then we'll come over to here, there, there, to there. It goes down to here over three. And I need to go back to my two snaps. And we'll go there and half to there. There to there. Got that wall, and then I got one more little side door. And again, I need to change my snaps because I wanted to go one foot past that mark. There we go. And then I'm going to take and sink that wall. Okay, we've now got all my walls put in place. So the next thing I'm going to do is add some floors. So we're going to grab some terrain here. I like this. Uh, Light brown dirt will be the color of the stables. To there, to there. Okay. And then I want uh, a little bit darker shade of dirt for the inside of the stalls because I figure they're probably a little mucky. Now, you can see here as I'm drawing this in, this looks really blocky and terrible. One, um, these tools automatically put it on a certain sheet 
which would be like a layer in uh, like Photoshop. You see, so it sank them down when I refresh the drawing. Um, also, when I apply effects to these, it's going to change how they look dramatically. Uh, next, I want a floor with horizontal wood for the house. And that's done. And then I want a floor for the tavern, and I'm going to use vertical boards there. There, to there, to there, to there, to there, and because I've got that weird snap thing, I'll go to there, and there, and there, and there. Okay. Got all my walls, all my floors put in now. So I'm going to go back to my, uh, let's stay on that snaps. Now I need to put fireplaces in these corners and uh, I don't have a diagonal fireplace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a manual polygon, which means I need to select what sheet I want to be on. So I'll just go to walls and I want to group it. Layers in this are really just a way to group items. It doesn't actually affect the order they're drawn. And I want to choose a texture of, let's see, this gray stonework. Okay, let's see. So we're going to start here. I'm going to go over four feet, like so. So, what I'm doing is just making a homemade diagonal, and I'm going to attach the fireplace to that. Um, again, you can see how they're laying over the other wall, so I'm going to select each one and push them down. Whoops! We made a mistake. We're going to edit these real quick. I apparently did not select the right layer. So, I want these on the wall sheet, and I want these on the wall's layer. Okay. Now let's try pushing them back. Because you know, what it is, it pushed them under the floors there. There we go. Now they're kind of hidden. All right. And when they shade, they'll look really good. Okay. So let's back out. <clears throat> Next thing I need to do is uh, let's get some doors put in here. So I'm going to go to my doors. And uh, I'm just going to use double doors here. I think they'll look fine. So first I want the doors for the stable. And we're going to turn off snap so I can tweak. Now you can see how it senses where I'm at, and it'll automatically cut the wall and insert the door for me, which is fantastic. There. And then I've got a varicolored door here, which means it'll be whatever color I have up here. It'll be shaded. And uh, I want a little bit darker door. Let's do, ooh, how about this dark gray? Okay. And we're going to put that right there, and then another one right there. Ooh, I don't like that one. Let's try that again. There, that's lined up better. And then I want a double door on the tavern. And that one will go right here, about there. And zoom back out, and let's get the doors for the house itself. I'm just going to use a plain old wooden door there. So one there and another one right there to get into the bedroom. <clears throat> and then lastly, I want a door to load the booze into this place, which is going to go right there. Okay. So if we back out, you can see I've got my floor plans. Uh, I've got my walls, I've got my doors. Next I want to add windows to the end. And there's an issue with my window tool. It's not cutting correctly. So what I'm going to instead do is put in doors, which will cut the wall like so. <clears throat> then I'm going to highlight those doors. Oops. One door, two doors, three doors, and I'm going to remove them. And then I'm going to stick windows in in place. Mm -hmm. two, three. All right, we'll redraw that. There we go. Now I've got my windows in place. <clears throat> so uh, let's back out, take a look at our map. Right 
here. Fractal. Okay, so what we want to do now is uh, let's get a path drawn in here. We're going to start there. And uh, swap there to there to there to there. Move it about halfway out to there. Up to the door itself. And we'll go there to about here and down to the doorway. <clears throat> Show the whole map. Yep, save. To here, down, over, up. I'm going to go to oh, about there, to there. There we go. Now we're on our way back. Up to there, to there, to there, to there. Okay. Now, looking at that path, it looks terrible. But whenever we apply our sheet effects, that's going to be all faded out. It's going to look beautiful, trust me. So next, uh, I want to put some trees in here. Let's put some rocks in first. So we'll go here, take my rocks. Ooh. Those are kind of wimpy rocks. I really wanted bigger ones. So what I'm going to do is 1.5. Oh, that's nice and big. Now this texture is really not, these symbols are real nice because they will automatically rotate and randomize each time I place them. Um, let's try and get this one. Yeah, that's better. I don't want my rocks to be occluded by the wall. And then I need one here. And I need one, the down one, right there. Yeah, that'll be all my rocks. Let's put some bushes in here. <clears throat> Bring my bush. Oh, too big. I want these bushes. I can hold control and just drag also. I want these to be about a square. Okay. I want one bush right there by the stable. I want one here. I want one here. Here and here. That looks good. Trees. These are supposed to fill three squares. That's about right. And let's see, I went over three there. That's about right. And then I want another one. Over one. About there. Hmm. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so there's my two trees. <clears throat> so, got my trees, got my rocks, got my bushes. All right, it's time to start furnishing these things. So, first we'll do the stable. This should be pretty quick. Um, containers. Let's see, I want a barrel. And I think about 0.5. Or we'll do 0.6. That would be a good barrel. Yeah, that's about right. I need to turn my snaps off so I get a little more precise placement. I want a barrel there. I want a laying down barrel, about like that. Yeah, that looks good. I want a crate that we'll put about there. Yeah, like that. And then uh, maybe a sack of grain. A mm, little bigger. A little angle. Well, let's go a little bigger than that. How much is a normal one? Ooh, that is a big old bag of grain. Why not? Okay, got us a sec. You know, I'm happy with the stables. I don't want to really overpopulate that one. So let's uh, jump out and furnish the bedroom now. <clears throat> oh, first thing we're going to do is uh, containers. I'm going to need a chest. Oh, I want a big fancy one. Oops, there we go. Um, now this is supposed to be... You know, that's about right. We'll do that. And we're ready for a bunch of furniture. I'm going to need a bed right off the bat. Oh, good. Bed's already the right size. And I'll do a bed here in the corner. And a cup. That's good. I don't want to get too much going on here. And then, um, oh, I need a fireplace. And we'll put our fireplace. Oh. A wimpy fireplace. I think we're going to make that 50% bigger. Yeah, 
Now you'll notice this fireplace is going to go off the edges. That's okay because when I refresh, <clears throat> corner is going to be hidden. So now I've got a diagonal fireplace. Um, let's see. We want to add a table. Hmm. That is a big table. So that's a little over 10 feet. How big is this table? I thought I saw another one. Oh, there it is. Table there. Yeah, that's the only table we got. Okay, so we got this table, which I want this way, and I want it to be about 10 feet long. So we're going to shrink it a little. Until it fits the two squares, and that looks good. Um, then I'm going to need another round table. And this table's supposed to be a little smaller than a square. I'd say about three feet. And that'll work. It's just a little round end table. And then we need some chairs for this thing. I want normal sized chairs. And we'll uh, put one in the corner. And we'll put another one here. I want it kind of pushed into the table. So what I'm going to do is move it so that it's down below the table. There we go. And uh, pretty happy with that room. So I think we're done there. Now let's move on to furnishing the inn. And we're just about done already. So first thing off, I know I'm going to need uh, some more round tables. That is a big old table. We'll do this one. Now I know I want this table to be a little bigger than the uh, square, like almost filling it. That looks about right. I'm going to set up my snaps for this one. Mm, no, I'm not. I want it about there. Uh, we're going to rotate it. Trick to uh, placing objects, if you just rotate them a little, it breaks up the monotony so that it doesn't look like you just stamped the same symbol over and over, even if you did. Okay, so I got my tables. Um, I want to put some chairs around there. Set those back to normal. So I'm going to chair there, there. Now I'm going to have tokens on these, so I don't really care if they're super, you know, unique and arranged with just the right tilt. Uh, one there, because in my game, I already know that my players are going to be fighting a bunch of guys who are sitting in these chairs. And I'm going to put one kind of here in the corner. All right, I need that long table again. And this time I want the table to be about uh, 10 feet long. Or, I'm sorry, 15 feet. But I don't want it that long. That's way too long. So I'm going to make this independent X and Y. And this is going to be about 0.55. Yeah. And what we're going to do is use this as a bar. And then we'll need some stools for it, which we'll set back to normal symbols. And we'll have a symbol there, a stool right there, and a stool right there. I'm going to need, let's see, some containers. I need barrels. That's too big. Let's try 80% of that. Yeah, that looks like a beer keg. So one there, one there, one there. Keep the booze flowing. And a cupboard, <clears throat> which I think was furniture. And cupboard. Now bear in mind, there are a ton of art packs for uh, fantasy or for camping cartographer. Um, for instance, the CSUAC pack and the SMAC pack, both of those can be ported into this. You know what? I think I have a skinnier cupboard. Yeah, I like that one better. This is actually like the bar. And so, if you wanted to, you could sit around and tinker with symbols. Oh, man. I don't want like that. I want it here. Yeah, that looks good. So, <clears throat> I'm sitting here thinking, uh, I guess I only need the fireplace here. Which, again, I'm going to do 1.5 on the fireplace. That's nice and big. And we're going to tuck that thing right in here. About there. We draw that. That covers up. 
feeling good about this. So if we take a look here, we're, uh, what, 23 minutes in. And I think my map's done. So let's see what happens when we turn effects on. Oh, you know what? Before we turn them on, I know that my trees are currently just on the symbol layer. And I have a special layer for those trees. Oh, I forgot a tree. Look at that. All right, we're going to grab this tree. Oh, God, that's a big tree. Um, I don't want this to be a normal tree. And I want my two snaps. This tree is supposed to go right here, but it's only supposed to take up two squares. Mm, let's try rotating that a little. Yeah, I kind of like that. All right. <clears throat> now we're ready to go. So what I need to do, uh, turn on effects, activate, all shadow, yes. Some of those trees, okay, please load. All right. So, as you can see, now that I've got my effects turned on, road, the trail looks a lot better, the stalls are faded out. <clears throat> I want to move my trees onto the trees layer or sheet. So I'll say do it and I'm going to say sheet symbols trees and okay now I'll redraw this real quick and you'll see that my trees cast a different shadow now. Come on redraw it. <clears throat> Should have brought something to drink. There we go. So you can see I got a different shadow on that now. Yeah. Um, what we do want to do though is uh, I forgot to draw my little doorway entrance on the side here. So let's add that real fast. And then I think our map's going to be done. There. Go to my map border, go to there, go to there, and done, refresh, and we should have a finished map. Okay, very last thing I want to do, you'll notice my grid, let me zoom in here. You can see that my grid's on top of everything, and I don't want that. I want to move my grid down so that my objects are on top of it which is pretty simple to do. What I'm going to do is check my sheets, find my grid. I'm going to move it up until it's below everything but symbols flat and everything that should be on the ground. And there we go. One finished battle map back up to a zoomed out view. You'll notice it really takes a long time to process whenever it's uh, saving like this, whenever you're rendering effects. Normally you draw with effects off. So I'm going to go to File, I'm going to hit Save As, and as soon as the cursor wakes up, I'm going to do a Rectangular Selection PNG, and in the Options, I already know that I need to add one more square to cover the border, so it needs to be 1800 by 2400 for 100 pixels per square, which is plenty big enough for any battle map. I'll hit save and I'm going to save over my old one. <clears throat> and all I have to do is come up here and hit, well, let's get my snaps to two. Just make sure I don't misclick here. Is select the area I want it to render. And I want it to go from there down to there. And now it'll render real quickly. So we will fast forward here in just a second once it gets done rendering, and I'll show you the last thing I do to my uh, images. Okay, so my map's done. I'm going to save that, close down campaign cartographer. And then over here, you can see I've got my E2A PNG. This is six megabytes, just a little bit big. So what I'm going to do is edit it with GIMP. You can use any photo program you want. I like GIMP because it's free and it's very powerful. Um, let's get a good representation of how this looks. 100%. So should give you a good idea of the quality of the map. So it looks great. What I want to do is export this map. 
Hey, did you turn the mic on? Yes, the mic's on, baby. Thank you. I love her. Okay, JPEG export. And uh, it's going to prompt me for what quality I want to use. So I would never use 90. It's honestly, it's too big. So what I'm going to do is 10 is what I would consider low quality. And just to give you an idea, that's 10% quality. That's perfect quality. So 134 kilobytes, 6 megabytes. You decide what it's worth to you. Now myself, I won't render a map at less than 30%. But here's an idea. Perfect, 30%. When you're talking about a tabletop battle map, that's 330 kilobytes. I mean, really. 60% uh, would be considered high quality. Uh, perfect map. 60%. I don't even know if the video is going to show the difference. I can barely see a little something in the shadow. Uh, that's only 570 kilobytes. And then 80% is what I would consider very high quality. I won't render a JPEG higher than that. And it's still only 920 kilobytes. And as you can see, I mean, it looks fantastic. This is typically what I render a map at if I'm going to share it with people. And then for battle map use, I'll drop it to probably 30% quality. Because I probably will only be having these squares at 64 pixels showing anyway. So uh, let's go ahead and export this map, which is less than a megabyte now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this down. And close that down. Uh, and then here is my new JPEG. Which, as you can see, looks fantastic. So there you go, less than a megabyte. So I uh, hope everyone enjoyed this video. Um, hope it was helpful, and uh, I'll see you guys on the virtual tabletops.